Henry VII is remembered as the first Tudor king, and it was he who defeated Richard III at the Battle of Bosworth Field. His reign would change England forever, and his son Henry VIII, who later came onto the throne after him, would be known for his brutal and barbaric reign. But there was a Tudor who came before them, who married a queen, and was considered a skilled courtier and also a knight. But Owen Tudor's life caused a significant degree of controversy, and he was later executed following a deadly battle during the Wars of the Roses. Join us today to look at the brutal execution of the grandfather of the Tudors, and remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Owen Tudor was a man who had roots in Wales. The Tudors as we know them were descendants from the Welsh, so when they took the throne, they were some of the first Welsh rulers of England. Owen was a descendant of Ennifed Fiachan, and this made him part of one of the most powerful 14th century Welsh families. Many of his relatives became leading nobles in Wales, and they played a key part in governing the land. They were given privilege even after Edward I conquered the land and built castles all over the country, but little is known about Owen Tudor's early life. It was alleged he was the illegitimate son of an alehouse keeper, or that his father was in fact a murderer. Some even claim that he was a man who fought during the Battle of Agincourt, despite this meaning he would have been a teenager when he would have done this. But many believe that Owen Tudor eventually became an esquire of Henry V, and later the keeper of his wife Catherine of Valois' household or wardrobe. It's not known how he managed to gain this position, but he then caught the attention of the Queen. During one dance at court, it's alleged he fell into the lap of Catherine of Valois, and that also he caught the Queen's eye when he was swimming. Several Welshmen had managed to secure positions at court following the Glendower uprising, and with this Owen Tudor could have come to the royal court. But Henry V died on the 31st of August 1422, and his wife Catherine of Valois then became a widow. At this time she lived with her infant son, King Henry VI, who was proclaimed king after his father's death, and the Queen already had her eye on Owen Tudor. Catherine, it's believed, may have had an affair with the second Duke of Somerset, Edmund Beaufort, and there was opposition to a possible marriage between the two. But Parliament even passed a law to regulate the marriage of the widow Queen, to keep an eye on this, and Catherine, outraged, said, I shall marry a man so basely yet gently born, that my Lord Regents may not object. She then married Owen Tudor, and the couple had three sons, named Edmund, Jasper and Edward. The couple were married for a number of years, but then Catherine of Valois passed away. With this, Owen Tudor lost the protection from the Dowager Queen, and was imprisoned in Newgate Prison, but he then managed to escape in 1438, and was then recaptured and was held inside of Windsor Castle. But in 1439 he was granted a pardon by his stepson, Henry VI, and was restored to his lands, and was given a pension of £40 a year to live off. He was also restored to court, and was then made the keeper of the King's Parks. Henry VI then allowed his two half-brothers, Edmund and Jasper, to court, and they were made the Earls of Richmond and Pembroke. Owen Tudor's pension was then increased, and he was a valued member of Henry VI's court. He also later acquired more land, and his sons also prospered. But then the Wars of the Roses erupted across the country. The House of York and the House of Lancaster, of which the King belonged to, went to war over the throne, and it would plunge the whole country of England into civil war. Owen Tudor joined his son Jasper in battle in January 1461, and they fought at the Battle of Mortimer's Cross. The battle was fought on the 2nd of February 1461, and was fought close to the Welsh border. The Lancastrian forces were led by Jasper Tudor and Owen his father, and these were loyal to King Henry VI. They were fighting against the Duke of York, the future Edward IV, and his army. The Lancastrian army was 1,000 men smaller than the Yorkist army, and the Tudor men tried to hold back, and the Tudor men tried to hold back Edward's division, but they could not. Owen Tudor tried to encircle the Yorkist left wing, but this did not work, and his battle was defeated, and his men were routed. Many of his soldiers fled the battlefield, and Owen Tudor was then captured. He expected to be imprisoned, and then to be held as a captive, and to be ransomed to the Lancastrians, but this never occurred. He was taken to the nearby town of Hereford, and was then paraded throughout the streets. He was taken to a scaffold where an executioner met him, and there he had his head taken clean off by an axe. It was said that his head, after it was cut off, was placed on the market cross there, and that a mad woman came and washed the blood from his face, and then surrounded his head with a hundred candles. 
Moments before his execution, he realised he was about to die, and he said, That head should lie on the stock that was once to lie on Queen Catherine's lap. Following his execution, his body was buried in a chapel in the Greyfriars Church in Hereford, and later his illegitimate son paid for his tomb. But Owen Tudor today is considered the grandfather of the Tudor dynasty, and his grandson would go on to defeat the Yorkist threat forever during the Wars of the Roses. He would defeat Richard III, and would begin to unite England in the aftermath of the Wars of the Roses. His great-grandson would be Henry VIII, the infamous sixth-wifed king, who would even execute two of his own wives. But Owen Tudor's execution was one of the first of the Wars of the Roses, a civil war that changed the country forever. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.